Worldwide lockdowns and other efforts to contain the coronavirus pandemic are having a major impact on our lives. Yet the sometimes extreme measures being taken are apparently having side effects on nature as well. We've been hearing about smog-free blue skies in Chinese cities and dolphins allegedly swimming in the ports of northern Italy. But the question is, what's really happening here? Is this just a brief pause? Or could it be the beginning of long-lasting sustainable changes? A promising sign that our Earth might finally be able to take a deep breath. After Chinese authorities implemented a strict lockdown on Wuhan, the city streets were deserted for more than two months. Now this image is repeating itself all over the globe. A third of the global population is now on lockdown, with strict travel bans and closed borders to non-essential journeys. As a result, streets and highways are empty, and most airlines have had to suspend operations. The most immediate side effect of all the policies aiming to contain the spread of COVID-19 has been a sudden drop in greenhouse gas emissions. In China, emissions fell by 25% after the outbreak of the coronavirus. And ESA satellites have detected a massive reduction of NO2 emissions across the European continent, predominantly over northern Italy. Cities that are notorious for their problematic levels of air pollution, like Beijing, Los Angeles, and Madrid, have reported rapid improvements in this regard. All across the globe, we are experiencing clear skies and empty streets. The change is visible in satellite images or even the GPS data on our sat-navs. Green ribbons wriggling through cities mark the absence of the usual traffic. But the consequences of the coronavirus pandemic aren't just having an impact on pollution levels. A reduction of human activity in general can apparently influence our natural surroundings as well. Reports of wildlife returning to abandoned places have been popping up all over the globe. Like this herd of wild deer in Maryland, goats appearing in Welsh towns, or even sightings of pumas in the city of Santiago. However, many of these reports have been unmasked as fake, like these drunken elephants in corn wine plantations of Yunnan, or the Venetian dolphins that were actually recorded off the island of Sardinia. Still, with large rural areas like national parks and ski resorts closed to the public, we can assume that there will be a positive impact on local wildlife. Winter tourism in particular is notorious for its environmental impact, especially for the disturbance of wildlife. Sensitive species like grouse or chamois usually run low on energy at this time of year. So the absence of people minimizes their stress hormone levels and could even improve their access to food. The early closure of ski resorts in Europe and North America could even have positive consequences for local wildlife in the long term, if an expected population increase vindicates. It's still too early to tell right now, so we'll have to wait until at least mating season to be able to confirm this assessment. A far more intriguing question might be, Will we prevent pollution from bouncing back to pre-pandemic levels once all this is over? Or could this disease bring long-lasting relief for nature? The answer is most likely no. History shows us that a rebound of pollution levels is highly likely. The economic crisis of 2008 saw carbon emissions fall, but as soon as economies started to grow again, pollution rose sharply to levels well above the pre-crisis ones. It's hard to predict whether we'll experience a similar rise in emissions again. But this time, there could be an important difference. With business travel banned and people ordered to work from home, we might see a change in behavior coming into play. This is mostly to do with our habitual patterns. It's hard for people to make changes, even if they know they should. 
but once those changes have actually been implemented, it's much easier to stick to them. A 2001 study by Kyoto University showed that drivers who were forced to use public transport for a certain period of time were unlikely to switch back to driving their cars, even if they could. So times of change can lead to the introduction of lasting habits. The behavioral patterns we're learning right now might also be good for the climate. We could find ourselves avoiding unnecessary travel or cutting down on food waste after this experience. However, there is a bigger threat emerging. The consequences of the economic crisis. By the end of March, the Trump administration had approved a $2 trillion rescue package for the American economy. Similar budgets were granted around the globe. Billion euros. Billion dollar With these enormous amounts of public spending being shoveled into national economies, we might end up on the other side of the crisis with no funds left to invest in green initiatives. The Czech Prime Minister Andrej Babiš has already declared that Europe's Green Deal to become emission neutral by 2050 is dead in the water. Similar concerns can be heard coming from North America as well. Right now, it's far too early to predict what the world will look like on the other side of this pandemic. Only a short while has passed since emission levels started to drop and the effects on wildlife are only snapshots in time deductive assessments that lack actual long-term data. But whatever the outcome may be, in dealing with this crisis, we might have just started to understand the consequences of overexploiting existing resources. If we succeed in flattening the curve of humanity's impact on the environment as well, we can ensure the survival of our species and many others over the long term.